Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to answer a question from Tony, KF0EJU. Now, he says he has a VHF slash UHF antenna mounted on a 30-foot mast. So he's got it up there pretty far. Uh, I, uh, do I need a dedicated ground rod for the antenna and mast and another for the equipment, or can I use the same ground rod for all my grounding? By the way, great YouTube channel. Uh, thank you, Tony. Okay, Tony, well, thank you for the kind words. Um, let's uh, back this off here so that we can uh, see the entire whiteboard. There, okay. Just a titch more. There we go. Okay. Now, there are two possibilities. He has the thing on a 30-foot pole. Okay, and he's got an antenna up there, and he's got... Uh, a house here with his shack in there and he's got a station ground over here utility ground over here the two are connected properly okay now he's asking if he needs a separate ground rod here for this and then bring the coax down here and have the lightning arrestor here or you could even go so far as to add an additional lightning arrestor over here now, from the point of view of the book, that's fine. That's the way you can do it. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't get that far. Uh, first of all, I don't put up tall uh, masts around anywhere on the property. I don't really have a way of doing that. Um, so, uh, see, this right here, this end of it is almost grounded what I would do is run um, a ground wire attached here over to this ground which is of course bonded meaning just connected to the well it means more than connected connected in a certain way to the uh, utility ground where you've got your panel out here and your electric meter Okay, you could bring it over there and put it in there. You could put a ground rod in here. Ground rods aren't too expensive. And just uh, with crimp connections and uh, say a number three, number two, number uh, six, bare copper stranded THHN wire from Home Depot, connect the two like that and you're fine. You want your lightning arrestor here. Now, would it do any good to put an additional lightning arrestor here? Uh, the answer is maybe. Um, I wouldn't, personally. But if you look at the uh, Motorola grounding book and stuff like that, the ARRL grounding book, you certainly could. But they're like, what, $100 a piece or something like that. By the time you buy the clamp and everything, you could just go over here. Now, of course, uh, you ground it here, and then you bring it into the shack. This is where it goes into the house and goes to your shack. And then in your shack, of course, you have a single point ground, usually a short piece of pipe. All your grounds inside your shack go to that, and then that is connected to the ground too, usually by an RF friendly um, RF strap, or uh, you could do it with um, braid or a variety of things you can do it. The idea being that if there is a lightning strike, everything that lightning affects is at the same potential. By the way, this ground should be bonded over here to this and this to this all of the all the ground should be connected okay I think that answers your question now let's look at another possibility let us assume that he has it's up 30 feet in the air but it's only a 10 foot 
mast on top of the house and you've got your uh, antenna here what I would do is run the coax down to the uh, lightning raster okay and then I would connect a wire from here down to the ground just to bleed the static charge off that uh, connects to this uh, when this is in the uh, in the wind okay so this gives you a little bit of an idea of a couple possibilities and uh, so Tony I hope that helps and uh, tells you uh, what you can do now I to, to answer your net question do I need a dedicated ground rod for the antenna and mast and another for the equipment uh, you really don't you can use the one especially if you're up here on the roof just use the one uh, ground rod for your radio equipment and then make sure it's connected over here uh, to this other one um, and if you've got the mast yes you can ground that uh, if you'd like um, I have a bunch of masts in my station but I don't have them grounded except for the one that's right here that holds up my uh, VHF antenna above the roof uh, that mast is right by the roof and I do have it connected via a wire to my ground rod to uh, bleed off the static charge the ones I have out in the backyard um, are not directly grounded per se because they're temporary now, although some of them have been there an awful long time but uh, uh, they're temporary okay I hope that uh, that helps if you've watched this far, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel. By subscribing to this channel, you're telling YouTube uh, that, in your opinion, it's a good channel and they should recommend it to others. Also, if you'd like to support this channel financially, you may certainly do so by looking at decastler.com support for different ways that you can support the channel. And until we next meet, 73.